Hi guys, Boston Potter here. Um, just going to show you a very quick video of how to make wood grain uh, a different way than I've done before. So um, uh, the, I have these three colors, Black Lab, uh, Mocha Fudge, and uh, Taupe of the Morning, Fun Stroke colors. So I have three colors. Um, I have a little stick with a dowel and a toothpick. I mean, a little dowel, which which I sharpened in the pencil sharpener. Um, and I have a toothpick because I'm going to need those. So uh, this here is covered with um, uh, three coats of Black Lab. Now I'm going to take these two colors, which is the Taupe of the Morning and the Mocha Fudge, and I'm going to do a wood grain pattern. And I'm just going to do it, like, I'm not going to put several coats, it's only going to be one. So I'm mostly going into the, um, I'm going into the top of the morning, but I'm also going to add some of the uh, mocha fudge with it also. Now I'm going to put it on pretty thick. There will be black beneath it. Okay, so, and what I'm trying to do is get the two colors on there. One of them's a lot darker than the other, and it looks darker on the thing. So you can go over the coats, you know, just but but you want it on there nice and wet. So I'm kind of getting two colors for this wood grain. You don't want to leave lines in it. So when you're doing this, don't um, don't keep going like this. You know, try to get it, try to get it all the way across. Oh, I got a hair in there. Okay, so try to get it all the way across so that you're doing this and you're blending the colors together. So go back in with a little bit of the other color. As you can see, it's already starting to look a little wood grainy looking. So, okay, so. And especially at the edge of your plate. I'm also going to do a mug like this also. So I'm doing it with the light color and the dark color. Now, as you can see, I'm going to turn the plate a little to make sure down here I got it right that it's coming off the plate. Sometimes when you're coming off the edge, you've got to go have a very light touch. Okay. And like I said, I want to put a little bit of dark in there. So you just blend in the colors, okay? You see how I got this? And we're going to do a little bit of wet etching into this color, okay? A couple little things on there. Okay, now you can see how this looks. Now I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. See how it looks? So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. And when it's dry, we're gonna do the wet etching on it to make it look like wood, okay? Um, and uh, I'm going to let that dry, and while I'm doing this, I'm also going to do it on this mug. So I'm going to need a little more color to blend. So I did this mug. It's already covered with the, the three coats of Black Lab. When you do wet etching, you should let it dry overnight. So this is already dry. You know, this has already been drying. So now I'm going to do this one. Gonna do the same thing, gonna kind of cover it. Kind of just take it to the edge. Now I'm putting on the, what I'm doing, I keep getting these little things in there. What I'm doing is um, the lighter color. I'm gonna try this, cause it might be easier than doing it that way. Just putting it a little bit and then, then doing a little bit of the darker over it. Put some streaks in it of darker color, of the darker color. Okay, so it's looking like this, see? I'm gonna go keep going around the whole thing. I don't have to worry about getting right to the top edge because it's got an edge on it, which I am gonna end up making it just to stay black, make the look 
the wood grain like it's in the inside of it. So we're not gonna, that's why I'm not doing coats and like letting it dry and doing another coat because the wet etching gotta be done when it's a little bit damp. Okay, you can see I still got some dark and light in there, okay. I'm trying not to stop in the middle of the piece. I'm trying to keep it all the way down, you don't wanna stop. Okay, so you gotta get it right to the top. Now I haven't done this before, this wood grain look with this, um, you know, doing it this way with the wet etching, so, um, but I have a feeling it's gonna come out really nice. I can't see how it wouldn't with this technique, so. So, I mean, getting in here, you might have to touch up your black after because getting in under the handle is a little bit tougher, but we'll fix it later with the black. I think it's gonna be okay. I still want it on there, okay? So that's it, I'm gonna leave it just like that. I think it looks kind of neat, just like that, okay? We'll clean that up later. So that's it. Now this here, I'm gonna move this, cause now, I think I'm gonna do the wet etching. Let's see if it's dry enough. It's dry to the touch, more or less, okay? So I can touch it. It's not completely dry to the touch, but dry enough. So I've got these two tools because this one's gonna create a, a heavier line where this one's going to create a, you know, a thinner line. Okay, so I'm going to go down. I'm going to hold my brush, my thing to the side. Kind of get the line straight as I can. You can draw a pattern if you want to, but I'm just going to wing it because I don't want it to have a lot of, you know, I it, it's just, it doesn't have to be perfectly even. So this line's going to be thicker than the toothpick ones, okay? So I'm going to put, I'm going to make them uneven too. I'm not going to put them all, I'm going to make them straight going down. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make them some thin and some heavy. So see, I'm going to make this one a little bit closer. That's why I'm saying they don't have to be exact. And take your time with it. You don't have to rush it. And the lines don't have to be perfect. Like I said, this is all going to be, um, it's going to have a lot of lines in it. So. I'm going to make this one fatter. Like I said, these are the fatter lines. See, this was just the right amount of dry. It took about four or five minutes, not even, um, to get this dry. The reason I, when I'm doing the wet etching, the reason I, you need to let the um, black dry underneath because this goes much smoother. If you had just put on the black, and it was only dry to the touch, but you decided to just do the wet. And then when you when you put this um, um, the toothpick or the dowel through it, and you're scraping through, or you're etching through this this here, what's going to happen? Even if you're holding it sideways, it's going to go through to the bisque, and you don't want that. You'd rather have it go through just to the black. That's why I'm kind of holding it to the side. As you can see, if you want to draw up, you can see that it's a little crooked, my things here. Okay, I'm gonna just do that. I'm not gonna blow it off, okay? I'm just gonna just tap it. Now, if you look at this, you can see the lines aren't all straight, but that's okay. If you wanna, like I said, if you want them more, more straight, you can, you can trace a pattern for these lines. But then I'm gonna do this with the toothpick. I'm gonna to just make scratches going all the way down.
just going throughout the wood. Now you can do thinner lines. I still don't hold my toothpick like this. I hold my toothpick sideways so that I can, I can, um, you know, get nice thin lines and I'm not digging through the bisque. The lines don't even have to go all the way through all the time either, so. Now, if you want to go back after and make these, these other lines thicker, you can. If you do this dry, it's so much more work. That's why I do the wet etching. I started doing that because when I do Scrafito, it makes a lot of dust. And it not only makes a lot of dust, the Scrafito also, um, it, it just takes longer because you've got to scratch really through, you know, the dry glaze. The wet glaze, it's kind of fun and easy. I said I still want to get thin, kind of thin lines. You can go back after and put some knots in it if you wanted to it. I'm going to show you also, at the same time, I'm going to show you in a second how to do a knot in the wood. Okay, let me shake some of that off. Okay, say you want to do a knot. This is how I do a knot. Okay, I'm going to get the camera a little closer. So to do a knot, I make a little spot like this, okay, that's opened up. And then I go like this and go around the knot. I'm going to show you this in a second, closer. You see how I went around that spot? See, so I went around the spot. So now I'm going to do... Do it again. That's how I do a knot. So then I'm still going to scatter some lines from it. You want to do this all before it gets too dry. Now, that's the basic of this. When it's fired, it should look nice because you're going to have, you know, the dark and light colors in there. So now I might go back and put a couple more knots in this. but And I might even go back and I might make these some areas a little bit fatter. Okay. And that's, that's basically, that's basically it. Now, I was looking for Father's Day ideas. And as I was looking, I seen this, okay? So, and it was more about, not the design, but more about this. Um, I might put a design on it or something, but it was more about how to get this wood look, this type of wood look. And do you see how close it is? to that um, when this is fired it should look something like that I'm hoping but this is how this would look this wood grain is okay so that's what I was trying to do so you just pull up things off the web and try to get an idea of how to do different techniques from it and that's about it guys catch you later